hey guys just popping in here um as i'm editing this it doesn't sound very clear on the order that i'm putting stuff in so what's going on is with the video i'm showing what i've done i'm showing how i did it and then i'm showing what i need to do in the future for part two so keep that in mind as you're watching so hey guys i am back with the new haircut and the ipod touch here so let's see what i've done to get this thing working so uh get this focused here as you can see i dang it as you can see i've got the ipod touch right here i'm gonna slide to unlock and type my passcode yes i passcode lock this so there it is ios 7 uh working on this device now there are a few things that i've done to it such as you can see the carrier symbol on the top now it says ipod i fixed that it used to say searching it bothered me like crazy so right here you can see now this says ipod touch it didn't used to i'm just trying to make this device as stock as possible so and now you can see here i've got wi-fi working now this i just moved the files over to the ipod touch so then it would actually let me see i don't think that i i don't think i have good range right now so i don't think we're actually gonna be able to connect to anything oh no it's just confused you can tell if it's stuck you'll see this spin for ages what you do to fix that is you go into the control center and you just tap this on and off like this now it's on and there we go it's showing networks now won't show my main network because i'm not close to the house at the moment but uh otherwise that's okay i don't need to connect to the wi-fi right now but right now that's what i've got working and just to prove that this is not dual booted also check this out look at how fast this loads now much better than what 91 tech said it did and that's because it was missing wi-fi and at the time there was no wi-fi fix so that's pretty cool that that is now working you can see uh, that's the wrong one so look right here capacity 6.2 gigs available 5.4 this is not dual booted you can see right here it is using the full eight gigabytes doesn't look like it but yeah it is this is the data partition the system partition is actually being used too see this is only an eight gigabyte ipod touch so so yeah so so far everything else seems to be working airplay works when i'm connected to the right wi-fi oh the wind wind is quite nice you can see uh airplay will work if i'm connected to the right wi-fi i'm not even close to the right wi-fi at the moment and if I don't connect to that, then like I could pick a different Wi-Fi network, but it won't show AirPlay, obviously, because there aren't any AirPlay devices. So, so yeah, you can see I've got my mail signed in. You can see the badge icon right there. I've got everything else basically works now, except for anything having to do with activation. I have done the activation hack, and it does let me install apps through iTunes, but it does not work um, if I use a newer version of iTunes. I haven't gotten any apps installed because it doesn't let me, but once I figure that out, I'll show how you can get apps on here. And along with there's no sound, I can adjust the volume using the buttons here, but you can see there's no blocks. This is a bad angle. Pushing the volume buttons, it does work, but it doesn't actually adjust the volume. And you'd be like, okay, let's check the control center, see if I can adjust the volume there. Well, the answer is no. You can see it doesn't even have a volume slider in here at all because it detects no sound. However, brightness does work. It has out of the box, which is pretty cool. The only thing in the control center that doesn't work correctly is the Bluetooth and the flashlight, which I need to find a way to remove this toggle because it actually causes lag within the entire control center. Watch this. If you open it, you can't tap anything at all for like the first five seconds or three seconds or so. And if you don't open it all the way, come on, it'll hang like this and then close. You can't do, hey, watch, if I go slow, you can't go slow, you have to be fast or else it doesn't open. And it's just a pain, it just, it needs to be fixed. So hopefully I'll get that sorted and then I'll focus on getting all the other drivers working. But what I'm going to do is show basically how I got all the stuff working on the iPod without having to dual boot. So first I download this utility here, this SSHRD. This tool right here allows you to uh, what is it? It allows you to SSH of the iPod in recovery mode, which is amazing, or in DFU mode. So it allows you to SSH and gain root access, which is exactly what you need to do to get all this stuff working. Now you're probably wondering why I'm on macOS Lion here. I'm on Lion because you need to be. You need to be on an older version of macOS for this to work, which is a big, which is a shame. I can't get it working on any of my newer Macs. You can try, but good luck. So for me, Lion worked the best. Uh, I'm running 10.7.0 that I've been afraid to update because I don't want to break anything. So that's basically how I got the iPod working. Um, it's not easy. It's never been easy, but it's just, it's been a pain, but I got there at the end. Well, almost there. I now need to get some Kex files and such working, which I've already explained. Well, except that I haven't. <laughs> 
there was going to be a clip before this clip here that got discarded because it was way too shaky. I tried to do something different and it didn't really work out. So yeah, let's get back to the video. So I'm going to talk about what a kernel cache is because I did that earlier and the clip didn't, oh my gosh, the sun. The clip didn't record too well, so. So what is a kernel cache? It is what iOS uses to store hex files and it is basically what I'm gonna need to get into to get everything working on the iPod Touch. Once I get into those files, hopefully I can pull the old kex from iOS 6. Hopefully they'll work on 7. Um, the thing is that I'm worried about is if they won't work on 7, I've gotta figure out why they won't. So, ugh, it's gonna be fun. So that's about it for this video. Uh, you can see, got the iPod Touch right here. Still works, still works pretty well. And while not everything works on it just yet, I'm gonna hopefully get that working in the next part of this series. I'm not exactly sure how long this series is gonna be. And if you're curious why this video was shorter than I wanted it to be, it's because I did a method that after I found out how to get it working on here properly, didn't apply anymore. So in fact, you saw that toward the beginning of the video, how I explained that. So yeah, stay tuned for part two. It's probably gonna be the next video, if not the video after that. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you all later. Bye guys. Thank you.